NGC Magazine was a British magazine specialising in Nintendo video game consoles and software. It was first printed in 1997 and ran until 2006. Until issue 60 in 2001, it was named N64 Magazine. N64 Magazine was the successor to Super Play, a magazine that ended in 1996. Many of the staff and the style of that publication persisted at N64 Magazine. In November 2000, N64 Magazine merged with Nintendo World, a magazine that was published by the same company, Future PLC. NGC Magazine ceased publication in 2006. Its successor, Gomer, was renamed Nintendo Gamer in January 2012, until publishing its final issue the following September. NGC Magazine was at the time of its closure one of the longest-running gaming magazines in the UK. It was on many occasions first for news including the denied by official source rumors such as the existence of Resident Evil Deadly Silence and the implication of the Wii controller and the delay of Zelda Twilight Princess both later being proved true in parts due in part to having no official connection to Nintendo and therefore no restrictions on what it could report save legal ones the magazine gained a reputation for honest and mainly accurate reviews again often due to having no games company links and a reputation for good humour. It had a very large fan base in the UK and Europe. The staff The staff of NGC magazine varied over the years. Memorable staff members included Jonathan Davies, James Ashton, Jez Bickham, Dan Geary, Tim Weaver, Will Overton, Mark Greener, Green, Martin Kitsy, Kitts, Andrea Ball, Dr. Mark Cousins, Z. Y. Nicholson, Garrett Evans, Justin Webb, Miriam Mim, McDonald, Steve Jaleem, and Paul Shedwards, Edwards. The magazine took usual light-hearted digs at each of its own staff. Jez was regularly lampooned due to his bald head. Mark Green had an evil alter ego named Dark Mark. Andrea Ball was apparently permanently covered in grease and fake tan, and also had a reputation for carrying a constantly trademarked big stick. Dr. Mark Cousins was mocked for his apparent lack of a Nintendo Entertainment System console, Tim Weaver was famed for his patented emotionless stare, and James Ashton was ridiculed mercilessly in the magazine's pages for continually failing to pass his driving test. To this very day, he drives his Ferraris on a provisional license. Garrett was often also the subject of jokes, due to his Welsh origins, with regular pokes at him and his culture and lifestyle. Thematic humor Topic. The many popular, satirical, running gags revolved around Nintendo executive and design staff, Shigeru Miyamoto most commonly referred by NGC as Shigzi, Hiroshi Yamauchi NCL's former president, who the magazine regularly called absolutely terrifying, Satoru Iwata, David Gosen, former CEO of Nintendo of Europe. The magazine claimed he was a homicidal robot named Gosen who would always say this year is a good year to buy a insert Nintendo product or calendar, and Reggie Fils Amy, referred to as a frightening man ogre who could crush you with his bare hands, in one issue a cut-out cat mask adorned with Reggie. S face was included in the magazine to frighten other cats. Having the readers send in weird things to win stuff, Luigi Papier match statues, photos of people dressed up as game characters, and pieces of alternative wisdom known as sense talks. One famous competition asked readers to send in tat of their own in exchange for over £1,000 s worth of tat from the N64 offices. Among the N64 tat was a life-sized cardboard cut out of Turok, star of several N64 games, along with two wigs that apparently belonged to Jez Bickham. The caption read, "'Make no mistake, when you see Jez striding down the street in his size threes wearing these hairpieces, you know he means business." This competition was repeated when NGC later reached its final issue. Random nonsense on popular love-hate relationship characters, Toad, Luigi, Sonic, Tingle, Diddy Kong, Crystal, Lex Luthor, Yoshi, Kirby, Django Fett, and Jar Jar Binks. Bonus letters. Nonsensical sentences picked out of letters which are not entirely printed. 
This could also include the titles at the top of fully printed letters, which took certain amusing words from the body of the letter and printed them in large, bold text to draw the reader's attention. This tradition, and the one above, have been continued in NGC's successor Nintendo Gamer formerly Gomer. Made up and ridiculous words such as, "...blork", "...grackler", "...interweb", and "...wa", "...grackler", is particularly infamous, in response to a competition in issue 16, "...send us something you think will scare us witless". A ghost story was received, part of which read, one nit when I was sleppin' a grackler cam. Sick. The entire sentence and later, the word grackler alone became part of N64 tradition, and it was eventually decided that the term should be used as a noun when referring to an exceptionally ugly person. For example, when the football game FIFA 99 was reviewed, a picture reference was made to the extremely horrible texture mapping on the players' faces, with the caption. Grackle Vision, GR Grackle Vision, Grackle Grackle Vision, in reference to the popular UK children's TV show Chucklevision. Wa is based on Wario's exclamation upon being hit by a shell in Mario Kart 64. Topic: <laughs> Will Fusoya Overton. Topic: Will Overton was the magazine chief artist until issue 42 and was held in a somewhat reverential light by the magazine s readers this could possibly have been brought about because some of the magazine's readers had followed will from super play magazine and felt a sense of loyalty to him but the n64 staff themselves would more than likely say it was because will ensnared them all in the tangled mass of electrical wiring masquerading as hair that he keeps atop his head Will came in for much more than his fair share of insults and jokes, but he was a vital part of the reason that N64 magazine stood out so much on the shelves. His manga styled cover art was different from anything on other magazines, and his years of experience, love for RPGs, and generally somewhat eccentric nature were comforting for many hardcore gamers. As a measure of this eccentricity, he was also known by the pseudonym, Fusoya. Fusoya was a wizard character from the game Final Fantasy IV, and Will, devotee of Final Fantasy that he is, added a trademark symbol to the character's name, and a legend was born, Fusoya, Will's beardy, RPG-loving alter ego, as N64 magazine described him. Fusoya appeared sporadically, sometimes to promote a competition, other times in response to queries in the magazine's letters section. His monstrous visage, actually Will in a cheap wizard outfit and very unconvincing fake beard, was a comforting sight to many. Will Overton eventually moved to Rare, where he worked as an artist for several years. He later returned to do some character design artwork for Gomer, including the cover of the final ever issue. Topic. Regular features Topic. Listed below is a set of NGC's recurring features N64, GC, a random page signifying the end of the magazine. Typically featured abstract Nintendo-related subjects. Examples included a fake magazine article of Lara Croft vs. Joanna Dark, a Nintendo Internet forum with fanboyish morons, and a newspaper obituary for the Nintendo 64. I'm the best, a league for readers competing against each other in N64 challenges. Grintendo, a small joke section whereupon a reader's usually abysmal joke is put to test against the team, photoshopped movie stars and Pikmin. Topic. Top scored games Topic. These are the top games that the magazine rated where the 100-point system was used. Ratings reflected are the last printed in N64, NGC magazine before it finished GameCube and DS games were re-rated for the first issue of Nintendo Gamer, NGC's successor. For two stints, first from 1999 to 2002 and then all issues dated 2005, the magazine ran a 5 out of 5 scoring system for portable games. This list is all games which scored the perfect 5, and thus do not fit in well with the above list. Topic. Controversial reviews Topic. 
The magazine handed out some controversial scores in its NGC years, mainly with some fan backlash found in the letters pages. A couple of examples are Star Fox Adventures, 72%, some thought to be a response to Rare's sale to Microsoft, although this being the reason for the score was denied. NGC humorously gave a cut out 98% sticker later on for people to paste over, as a response to it. Sonic Adventure DX, Director. S cut 38%. Some readers wrote in accusing this of being because of the magazine. S hatred of Sonic, also seen in Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Heroes reviews, but Sonic Rush, Sonic Riders, and Sonic Advance 3 got better grades, five fifths, 75%, and 81%, respectively. Also, Sonic Mega Collection was placed at number five on their top five platformers for GameCube. Kirby Air Ride 51% had a couple of minor complaints, but the game was received similarly elsewhere, also people thought it was due to the magazine's hatred of Kirby. The famed, bad reviews The magazine S reviews of games they considered to be terrible were enjoyed by readers due to the use of comically savage language to more convey the staff. S discussed with a particular game in descending order. Clayfighter 63 and a third N64 24% was described as being as painful as having red hot needles shoved into your eyes. The top tip section revealed that Breaking the cart open reveals several chips of varying thickness. Stack them together to prop up wobbly chairs, etc. Cruisin USA N64, 24% was described, simply, as, "...dump". Rampage 2, Universal Tour N64, 22% declared an, "...utterly rancid arcade yawn fest". Trump World N64, 21% to give it the full title. Alice's Waku Waku Trump World, an unfathomable Alice in Wonderland themed card game, was deemed nose achingly pungent and a real Lenny Bennett of a game. Wheel of Fortune N64, 17% another U.S. quiz show port, this was found to be worse than accidentally falling off a cliff and surviving. Castleween GameCube, 16% this platformer. S attempt to attract the younger generation of gamers was described via although it S aimed squarely at the ultra young market we can T imagine many small children having the patience to endure an entertainment experience as arduous as this not when pushing lolly sticks into dog turds offers so much more long term excitement and is a good 40 pounds cheaper Batman of the Future N64 16% A Miserable excuse for a fighting game. Batman: Dark Tomorrow, GameCube, 15% just described as like having the skin flayed from your fingertips. Later, when Batman Begins was mentioned on the cover, the magazine asked the rhetorical question: Can it beat Batman: Dark Tomorrow? Well, it wouldn't be hard. Superman N64, 14% was initially viewed as an utterly hopeless, consistently appalling leper of a game bordering on the illegal. Superman became the butt of all jokes after it was reviewed, and described in issue 100's Hall of Shame as a game of legendary so bad it's almost goodness. Features the legendary level where Lex Luthor asks Superman to solve my maze. Which later was a small competition segment in the magazine, the last of which was named, Solve My Murder, and had three ways in which Luther was killed. Aragage 10% was ridiculed severely, and a top tip provided with a quick reference review in the magazine's index section read If you handed over good money for Arrow Gage, 01 asterisk 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 number censored for privacy is the number to ring to complain. Further, the sound was described as being what your TV's mute button was designed for. Beyblade GameCube, 10% was referred to as being scat encrusted. In the mastery section, it was stated that the only thing this game has mastered is total crapness. And Kitsi said, 
it's rubbish, really rubbish, honest, it's crap. In later issues, the game's summary within the magazine's review directory read, For £20, we will come to your house and cheese grater your eyeballs. It's more fun and lasts longer than this frickin' spinning top sim. Jeopardy! N64, 9% a U.S. import only, was described as, "...less a game, more a vile disease." Apparently, "...so ugly that, if you look at it, you'll turn to stone." Mortal Kombat Mythologies N64, 9% possibly the most despised game of NGC magazine history, the price was stated as pound too much. The mini review stated that this could only be less enjoyable if it squirted sulfuric acid into your face, and the staff's frustration with the game's mechanics was revealed in a tip section. Creep along in that sideways spider fashion and then get crushed by a pillar. Place your fist into TV screen. Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue N64, 9% described by Greener as 60 of the most bitterly tedious minutes of his life was also described as constipated puppet men jerking their way around Lego built cities. Carmageddon 64, N64, 8% was the lowest rated from 1999 until the end of 2004, and was described as brain meltingly awful and a shocking travesty. Players were instructed, if they saw the game in the shops, to Take it off the shelves, rip up the box and throw the cart repeatedly at the wall until it breaks." Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Second edition 5% the worst score in NGC's history. You DB better off staying as far away from this lazy slab of plastic as you can. So it's getting 5% for existing. And that is generous. Lego Island 2 The Brickster's Revenge N64, 3%. And you think that Clayfighter was bad? Wait till you see this. It is the worst game on the console, except for a game which actually throws up instantly without any further ado. Avoid like the plague. Top tip section. Press all the directional pad buttons and then lose in the rocket ship test, then pull the cartridge out and play baseball with it in place of the ball. The magazine decided to cancel the port in anger, and, two final honorable mentions Get a Love, Panda Love Unit N64, percent the strangest game ever reviewed for NGC magazine, and as such, a score was impossible to award. The decision reached was, percent, and the review read thus, "...impenetrable Japanese girlfriend simulator. No, hang on, that came out all wrong." Giftpia GameCube percent awarded the score for the fact that it was so heavy in Japanese that they didn t have a clue what was going on in the game and thus didn t feel they could award a score. However, the review was not unfavorable to the game's graphics and sound, giving them marks of eight out of ten and seven respectively, and even making the comment that there's clearly a quite brilliant game lurking beneath the realms of the Japanese text. References Topic